Once you've obtained the IP address to your UNAS, go ahead and type it in. Gives us this little nifty presentation. Let's us know that Ubiquiti is committed to securing your data and protecting your privacy. I'm going to click on set up the NAS. Give it a name. I'll leave mine default. Agree to the terms and service. And now I'm going to type in my UI.com credential. If you don't have a UI account, there are other options like creating a, a local account or you can proceed without an account. Since I do use Unified products, I already have a UI.com account, so I'll go ahead and type that in. And of course, we have multi-factor authentication for those of us using UI.com, which means that I have to open up my Verify app on my mobile device. And after typing in the code, uh, I'm logged in to my account. Now it says that uh, no backup files found. That's normal. We haven't used one of these before, so I'm just going to go ahead and click continue here. Now it says uh, apply storage protection. Please install your drives and select your desired storage protection. So you're given the option to either use basic protection or higher protection, but I'm going to stick with basic protection. And if you want to know the difference between them, you can just hover over the informational icon. And it says here, this dictates how many of your drives are reserved for data redundancy. The two tiers are basic protection. A single drive is used for data redundancy. Please note that two are required for RAID 1 configuration and three for RAID 5. Higher protection means half of your drives are used. At least four are required for RAID 10. But like I said, I'm going to stick with basic protection. It's totally up to you what you want to do for your setup. I'm going to click finish. And now it goes through the process of setting up Unify OS. And after a few seconds, it brought me to this. I think this is probably normal. I don't have a certificate installed for it, so I'm going to click advanced and then proceed. And the console update continues. It says it's going to take about five minutes. So we'll skip this. All right, so after a few hours of waiting for it to automatically refresh, I decided to just hit refresh on my browser and now it actually prompted me to log in. Uh, I did walk away for a bit uh, to come check it out, but uh, maybe something that they need to address is, you know, once the up, once you do your initial uh, login, that it should uh, refresh the page automatically. And that's what I was expecting, but that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and log into the, UNAS Pro, and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, tell it to remember my credentials and sign in. And you're, if you have uh, multi-factor authentication turned on, you'll have to uh, log in with your Verify app on your mobile. Okay. All right, so it's giving me a welcome screen now. Uh, it's giving me a couple of license agreement and subscription terms to agree to. So I'm going to check those off, hit start. And here we are now. Keep in mind, I have not added this to my UI account completely. So I am logged in directly uh, to the NAS on my network. And it gives you a similar uh, interface to, to other unified devices. For example, I have the UDM Pro. I also have a UDM at my parents' house and and also UNVR. So from here, I can see that I have all my drives installed. I have four 20 terabyte drives and it's still in the process of initializing each drive. Uh, it gives me the total storage up here at 60 terabytes. Uh, it's already giving me some telemetry information here of throughput, like set up now for backups. Here's a snapshot schedule. I don't have either set up. I have not set up any users or any file services. It does give me information on my recent login. So from the factory it comes with Unify OS 4.1.7 and the application drive.1.16.7. I am connected through gigabit, uh, but once I'm back mounted, this will be done through 
uh, 10 gigabit. And I know that means that my throughput uh, will be impacted by that, but that's okay. We'll take care of that once we connect it through the 10 gigabit port. So if I look over here, we have a little menu here. Hovering over it, it says there's a dashboard, all files, trash, system log, and settings. So let me go ahead and click on all files. Since I'm the only user on this, it's telling me who has access. It's only me and the storage available. Now, if I go to trash, uh, I have not deleted anything. So there's nothing there for me to delete. So that's empty. Hovering over to system log, I can see that it gives me activity, storage, backup, snapshot services, and host. Uh, most of these will probably be empty because this is straight out of the box. Uh, I do have activity here, uh, such as logging into the NAS itself, but I can imagine most of these will be empty. Um, here's the host information, again, reflecting who's logging in and, and uh, at what time and all that. If I go to settings, I can. this is where I can set up the backups, snapshots, shared links, services, push notifications. It's got the UNAS Pro uh, control plane, and then this is where I can administer users. So now that we have something basic set up, I'm going to look into how we can add this to the rest of my Unify stuff through Site Manager. Uh, I would imagine it's already signed in, but I'm going to click on Site Manager here. Uh, says <laughs> release notes not found. Okay, I guess that's not the way to do it. Okay, you can see in here that I've logged into my UI.com Unify Site Manager. And the UNAS is already listed here. Uh, but you'll notice that it does say that I have to click on this merge. And according to this, it says consolidate applications from co-located consoles into a single site. Click to merge with UDM Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and click on merge. So now I merged it into the UDM Pro. So in order to access the storage, I would have to click on the Dream Machine Pro here from my site manager. And you'll see that I have a storage icon here at the top, and that represents the drive application. If I click on that, so it shows it now as part of my Dream Machine Pro. And it basically gives me the same information as I showed you earlier. But now I can access it from outside my network to manage it. Some useful information here. I can go ahead and mount uh, using Samba on my Mac or Windows machines. And Time Machine is enabled by default. All right, so I gave my UNAS Pro some time to finish initializing all the drives. So now when I hover over each of the drives that are listed in there, you can see that they all now say 20 terabytes. They're all green. It no longer says initialize like it did yesterday. But in order to be able to access um, storage on these, I need to be able to set up uh, some credentials. Although I already have credentials for this, um, I don't have the Samba credentials. And that's the protocol that I'm going to use to be able to mount on whether I'm using a Mac or Windows machine. And to do that, I'm going to go to the settings menu, admin and users and then users at the top and select my current user. And on the right hand side, I'm going to click on settings. And you see down here, it says file services credentials. Uh, if I hover over the informational icon, it says allow users to sign in via Samba connections and the drives local IP. So I'm going to check that box off and I'm going to give it a username and also give it a password. Once I've entered the username and password, I'll go ahead and click on apply changes. And it does warn you that uh, you'll be logged off your current active sessions and you'll have to log back in with your new username and password. And you want to continue. I'm going to click on confirm. I've now logged back into the UNAS Pro console. And you can see now down here where it says active file service credentials you'll see a number one. So that tells me my user account has been created along with the credentials that I provided. If I click on users, click on my username here, then settings, 
you'll see now that it says file services credentials have been created. It's got a check mark in the checkbox and it's got my username. And I can always come back here to reset my password. So I'm gonna close that. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna set up Samba Share on my Mac here by going to the Go menu at the top left. Click on Connect to Server. Type in SMB and then the IP address of your UNAS. Then click on Connect. And then when it prompts you that you're attempting to connect to it, click on Connect. Then type in the credentials that you created during the setup process. I'm gonna tell it to remember this password in my keychain by clicking on the checkbox here. Once connected, you'll see that now I have a personal drive listed here. And of course there's nothing in there. Now I'm gonna create a folder just to make sure that I have permissions to be able to create uh, files and folders in here. And there it is. Now that I've created that test folder, I'm gonna validate that it's there by going to the drive itself. So I'm gonna to go to all files on the left-hand side Click on my account and you can see that the test folder is in there. Now that I can view this folder from here, there are some operations I can do from this particular console. If I click over here on the right hand side, you'll see that I can rename the folder, duplicate it, move it, copy it, download it, or I can even share it or trash it if I want. But what I'll do instead is I'll just open up the folder. And when I do, you can see that I could uh, drop files in here using the web UI and they should appear on my drive that's mounted on my Mac machine or any machine that I've mounted this share to. So for example here I have a test file that I'm gonna drop in there. It's just a simple text file. Drag it, drop it, and now it shows up on the drive here. And if I go back to my mounted share drive and open it, I should see that file in there. And there it is. So you've got several options for uploading files. You can either do it through just drag directly dragging and dropping from within your uh, machine to your share drive directly, or you could potentially just use the console on your UNAS Pro. Uh, so there's various ways you can manage your files. And one of the cool options about the UNAS Pro is that I can now go ahead and share this drive with really anyone. So to do that, if I click on the test file itself, you'll see on the right hand side it says share link. If I click on that, I have various options when sharing. I can set a link expiration. So for example, if I wanted to just give limited access for a set period of time, I can have that link expire. There's also an access limit that limits how many times this file can be accessed. So you can make it a one-time use link or you can password protect it as well. Just for this test, I'm gonna click on create and copy link. You'll see that it says test link uh, created. And then to be able to share this link, I can either copy the link and share it, generate a QR code or download the QR code. So I, I, there's different ways to share that link with folks that you intend to share this with. And I think that's kind of nifty because it's a secure way to share files. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy the link and see where it takes me. Now I'm gonna paste the link here and you'll see that the file is now available for whomever the intended recipient is to be able to access that file. And here's the cool part. I didn't have to set up any kind of dynamic DNS. I didn't have to buy a domain name. I didn't have to punch holes through my firewall. Unify has decided to uh, offer permalinks to your files that you intend to share through their own drop.ui.com domain name. And I think that's kind of nifty. Uh, it removes a lot of the complexity that's involved with sharing files, just makes it easier for you to work with others and be able to get what you need out there for others to be able to use as well. So now that I have a file that I'm sharing through a shareable link, I just wanted to point out that you could go back in case you forgot what you've shared in the past by going to the settings menu from the console, click on shared links, and then you'll be able to see a list 
of all the links that you've shared with folks and then click on manage and delete them if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here, click on delete and now it's gone. So I'll be making more videos on this, but for now, I think I just wanted to showcase, you know, how easy it is for things to get set up on the UNAS Pro. I'm a QNAP user. I've used QNAP for the last, uh, you know, almost seven, six, seven years. And I really like it. I like all that it does. I like, I like all the application options and all that. But now that I'm doing more home lab type of stuff, I want something that's faster that can that I can stick more drives into. This supports up to seven uh, drive bays. Right now I only have four occupied. And for the price point, I thought this was the perfect device for me. I, I don't need it to have all those apps in here. I don't need it to do VMs, containers, or any of that stuff because I already have a separate server where I do all of that thing. Is this for everyone? I don't think so. Uh, but it is for me. It's a perfect use case for me. I just needed something that I can easily manage, has some features that fit my needs, and I think this is a great device. So again, I look forward to making more videos on this in the future. Just wanted to give you a preview. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.